One of the main ways that China has been engaging in economic warfare against the U.S. is through state-sponsored hacking and corporate espionage. The economic conflict between the U.S. and China extends beyond just tariffs and market restrictions. It also includes issues such as currency manipulation and intellectual property theft. The U.S. has accused China of artificially devaluing its currency, the yuan, in order to make Chinese exports more competitive in the global market. This has led to a trade imbalance between the two countries, with the U.S. importing more from China than it exports to China. The U.S. has also accused China of failing to adequately protect American intellectual property, including patents, trademarks, and copyrights. This has led to a high rate of counterfeiting and intellectual property theft in China, which has cost American businesses billions of dollars in lost profits. The U.S. has taken a number of actions in an attempt to address these issues and level the playing field for American businesses. In addition to tariffs and market restrictions, the U.S. has also pursued trade negotiations with China in an attempt to address some of these issues. However, these negotiations have not always been successful, and the U.S. has also imposed additional sanctions on China in order to pressure it to make changes. The impact of these actions has been significant, as it has disrupted supply chains and disrupted global trade. This has had negative consequences for both the U.S. and China, as well as for other countries that are caught in the middle of the conflict. The economic conflict between the U.S. and China is just one aspect of the broader strategic competition between the two countries. The U.S. and China have also engaged in military competition, with both sides building up their military capabilities and engaging in various forms of military cooperation and competition around the world. The U.S. and China have also engaged in diplomatic competition, with both sides seeking to influence other countries and shape the global order in ways that favor their own interests. The conflict between the U.S. and China is complex and multifaceted, and it is likely to continue for the foreseeable future. In the early 2021, the United States government passed the Something Called CHIPS Act, which allocated over $50 billion in grants and incentives for American semiconductor manufacturing. This move was in response to the decline in America's share of global semiconductor manufacturing, which fell from 37% in 1990 to just 10%. The CHIPS Act was an effort to revitalize the struggling semiconductor industry, but it faces challenges due to competition from other countries, as well as differences in approach between American and Chinese semiconductor manufacturers. In addition to the CHIPS Act, the U.S. has also implemented other policies aimed at restricting China's access to certain technologies and markets, such as the president signed 2019 executive order that blocked Huawei from selling equipment in the U.S. This ban was justified on national security grounds, but was seen by many as a way to protect American companies from competition. The U.S. has taken a number of actions in an attempt to address these issues including trade negotiations and sanctions, but these actions have disrupted global trade and had negative consequences for both countries and other countries caught in the middle of the conflict. In addition to the challenges facing the U.S. semiconductor industry, the country is also dealing with competition in the telecommunications market. Huawei, for example, has been a major player in this industry and its ban from the U.S. market has led to concerns about the country's ability to keep up with advancements in 5G technology. Huawei's deep ties to the Chinese military and its potential to access worldwide internet traffic through back doors in its hardware have been cited as national security concerns. The U.S. has responded to these challenges by investing in domestic telecommunications companies and increasing funding for research and development in this field. The ongoing economic competition between the U.S. and China is complex and multifaceted, and its consequences will be significant for both countries and the rest of the world. While the U.S. has taken steps to address its declining market share in industries like semiconductors and telecommunications, it remains to be seen whether these efforts will be successful in the long term.
The competition between the two countries is unlikely to end anytime soon, and it will be important for both sides to find ways to work together and address their mutual concerns in order to avoid further escalation. TSMC and ASML, two companies at the center of the conflict between the U.S. and China, have a long history of partnership and innovation in the field of computer chip manufacturing. They develop technologies such as immersion lithography and EUV, a process in which a generator ejects tiny droplets of molten tin that are then vaporized into plasma using a laser. This plasma emits extreme ultraviolet radiation that is focused into a beam and directed at a silicon wafer, allowing for the creation of transistors with features measuring only 5 nanometers. These advanced machines, which cost $120 million each and have over 90,000 to 100,000 parts, are made by ASML in the Netherlands with the help of over 700 to 900 suppliers. However, the supply chain for these machines is largely controlled by the U.S. and its allies, while China continues to lag behind and rely on international suppliers like ASML. In September, the U.S. restricted the sale of high-end processors, specifically NVIDIA's top-of-the-line graphics processing units, to China. These chips are essential for training advanced AI models and are significantly faster and have more memory and bandwidth than consumer options. In response, China launched a military campaign towards Taiwan and increased efforts to change the status quo. On October 7, 2022, the United States president had extended a much-needed national emergency rule banning U.S. firms from investing in Chinese military-linked companies preventing China from purchasing certain semiconductor chips made with U.S. equipment and even prohibiting them from buying the machinery to make the chips themselves. This caused Americans working in China to choose between quitting their jobs or losing their American citizenship, leading to a significant loss of executives and engineers for Chinese semiconductor manufacturers. China's economy has boomed in recent decades due to its specialization in labor-intensive manufacturing which has made it the world's leading manufacturer. However, the country has not invested as much in capital-intensive manufacturing, such as the production of semiconductors. The recent crackdown by the United States on Huawei, a Chinese technology company, has brought attention to China's reliance on foreign technology and has spurred the government to invest more in the development of domestic chip production. Despite being behind in this area, the Chinese government is committed to catching up and has poured resources into the high-tech manufacturing sector. Some analysts believe that China's military response to this technology gap will not be directed at Taiwan, but rather will involve demonstrating their independence from foreign technology through actions such as the Ukraine-Russia conflict. Thank you for watching.